Hello everyone. Welcome to the channel Physics Fun. So in this video, I have uh, again come up with uh, Pathfinder questions, solution of Pathfinder questions. So there are three questions which we are going to take. All three are spring questions. And in this video, we are going to learn a very, very simple concept. Very, very, you can call that trick also. Very, very simple trick, which makes all spring questions very, very simple, right? Just one liner. Okay, so let us see these three questions. These two are uh, objective. These two are objective questions, and this is one subjective question, right? So let us straight away go to the concept, the thing which we have to learn, and then we will apply this in three questions of Pathfinder, right? So first point is that in a complex spring combination, the entire combination of the spring can be replaced by one single single spring of proper spring constant, right? We'll see how. This can be done by writing energy conservation statement as follows. So how we, how just by writing energy conservation, we can simplify all complicated spring questions into a very, very simple question, right? For example, you have a very complicated system in which 10, 15 springs are there. You can just, if you understand this, then you can replace all those 10 springs by one spring and solve the questions very easily, right? Just in one line. So let us see. You know this spring potential energy half kx square. You know spring force is kx. So potential energy I can also write k. I can multiply up and down in return denominator. So it becomes k square x square by two k t square by two k is the spring potential energy. Fine. So if there are ten springs, then if you're replacing that by an equivalent system of just one spring, then energy of left hand side and right hand side should be equal. Fine. Just that now energy we are going to write in this term, right? In this way, not in this way. Fine. It doesn't make a difference because Kx is the spring force. Fine. So when you do that, what happens? Half and half will cancel both sides. And then T square will also cancel both the sides. Fine. So just that now what you will be left with coefficient of T whole square, whatever is the coefficient, one, two, three, like that, whole square of that, because net spring, net tension force you will have to write here. This is equal to number of springs. So suppose there are 10 springs, 10 terms will come here. Each and in each and every every spring, what you have to see, you have to see the coefficient of T and its corresponding spring coefficient and add all, right? What is this energy conservation? Total energy here is total energy here. Fine. So let us straight away go to the first question. This is question number 34. I have already solved this question. So you can pause the video and then try this question. See here now. There is an arrange arrangement, springs are light and have a spring constant, a spring stiffness 100 and 200. So I have write, uh, written this as k and this is as 2k. And um, maintaining these strings straight and a spring is relaxed. So there is no elongation in the spring as of now. Now the force supporting the block is gradually re reduced to zero. Fine. So this is laws of motion question. They cannot ask you the time period of oscillation. The similar question, the same question can come in SHM also. They might ask you to find out the time period of oscillation. That question also you can solve here, right? So here they're just asking you that if you gradually reduce, then reduce the force and there won't be any oscillations. If you suddenly reduce the force to zero, there will be oscillations, right? So, so they, they can't ask you to find the time period of oscillation. They're asking in a different way. So that is what force supporting the block is gradually reduced to zero. How far does the block descend during the process of reduction of force, right? So basically you have to find the equilibrium position of the system, correct? So let us see how do we proceed this. So here tension is T, right? I'm assuming tension is T here. Here will become T by two, T by two. You understand why? Because pulley is massless. Now then here, if it is T by two, just see where I am pointing it. Then here also it becomes T by four, T by four, right? Again, same reason, pulley is massless. And here it is T by two, so in this spring it is T by two, right? So now see the magic. How this entire system can be replaced by this very, very simple system, right? So left-hand side is what? So what was the formula? Coefficient of T by K equivalent. Left-hand side, just one spring, so one term, okay? So this is one spring, K equivalent. What is T here? Just take care of this. Here T, here also T, fine? So coefficient of T here is one, T into one, so one square by K equivalent. Now here, how many terms will come in right-hand side? Two terms. Why two terms? Because there are two springs. So here, what is the coefficient of T? One by four. One by four is where you are seeing. What is spring constant? K. The spring constant is K, right? Here, K2. K2 is 2K. Okay, so that comes 2K here. 
what is uh, the tension here? T by two. Coefficient is what? Half. That is why if you now see, I have not written T here because T square will cancel both sides, right? You understand? Here, if you write T square, that cancels both sides. You don't need to write, even write T square also. Just write the coefficient, one upon K equivalent, one by 16, one by four into two, eight. So this two into 16, three by 16, K equivalent comes out to be 16 K by three, F equal to KX naught. So KX naught, now this diagram you have to see, you can forget completely about this now. So 16 K by three into X naught is eight into 10. What is it? It is the block of this, mass of this block, right? And you get X naught equal to 15. Isn't it simple? It's very simple. If you understand, then properly just it's very simple and it will make whole lot of questions very, very easy. The in SHM chapter 90%, not 90, 70% of the questions are basically based on spring mass, right? Oscillations. If you understand that, those 70% questions you can solve just in one line, right? Fine. Okay. So this question now again, you can pause the video, try this question. Here, why I've taken this question? Because in this method also, there are chances of mistake, right? So there's one place where normally students make mistakes. So we have to see that point here, right? So that you never make mistake in this. The question is that block is placed frictionless floor. Everything is ideal. The spring has a stiffness K. Block is pulled away from the wall. And how far will the block shift while the pulling forces increase gradually from zero to again gradually? Because it is laws of motion chapter, they can't ask you the uh, oscillations, right? Time period of oscillations, right? I have uh, solved this question just now. So that is why I'm just reading the key points. You can pause the video. You can read the question properly and give it a fair try, right? Okay. So from next time onwards, I will not mark the video, mark the answer because otherwise it will be difficult for you to try this. So I'll take care of this from next video onwards. So let us see what we have to do after uh, I think you have tried and you have again started this. So I have assumed T here, right? So now see, same string, massless, same tension, T, T, and T, right? See where I'm pointing? So this is the pulley, T, T, C, T, T, makes it 2T, right? 2T. Now T, T here, T, T here, again, see where I'm pointing, makes it 2T, correct? And this is the block. What is the net, this is the point where you have to be careful. What is the net tension force on this 3T? Right, it's not T. So left hand side, three square will come, coefficient of T, right? Here, see three T. So nine is coming here. If you miss this nine, question is wrong, right? So nine by K equivalent here. How many terms on right hand side? Four, why? Four springs. A spring coefficient of T, one, one. K, K, right? All have K. Coefficient of T, two. So four, this term, four by K. Here, four by K this one by k, right? And then you get nine by k equivalent, 10 by k, and then you can solve it, right? k equivalent is nine k by 10, f equal to, again, this is not, right? Even 10th class student also now can solve this question. kx naught is equal to f. So kx naught is f, right? Very, very simple question. Now this question, if you don't know this method becomes a little bit long, right? You will have to put a lot of, it. it is time consuming, right? Minimum two, three minutes you have to spend. But if you know this method, then just in 30 seconds, you can solve, right? The, I, I'm taking more time because I have to explain. But once you know this method, then after that, you can just solve it in 30 or 20 to 30 seconds, maximum 40 seconds, and find the answer, move to the next question. This is a difficult question, right? So fine, let us move to the next one. This is subjective question, build up your understanding, question number 30. Let us see very quickly here, two springs we are seeing, and there's a thread here, fine. So light frictionless pulley, fine. Light spring, okay. One end P of the light inextensible thread that passes over the pulley is free. They're talking about this point. And other end is tied to the another light spring, this one. That is affixed to the ground, fine, this one. At its lower end, okay, that's fine. As shown in the figure, correct? We can understand this. The stiffness is K for both, that's also fine. The free end P, this is free end, is H equal to, this is H 10 centimeter of the ground, what minimum pull at the end P will bring it to ground, right? So here, one more very important thing is that the entire system is massless, right? There is inertia is almost zero. There's no block here. So, but still we can always simplify this, right? We can think, and instead of thinking in this diagram, it's always for everyone, it's simple to think in this diagram. So why not convert? So let us convert now. Here, T, 
t to t, right? So one upon k equivalent is here. What is coefficient of t two? So two square four by k, right? Here, what is the coefficient of t one? So one square one by k. K equivalent is k by five. Now, after that, since there is no mass in this, so system will always be in equilibrium. Fine. So if you want to bring it to this point, then how much force we will have to apply, and then we will have to apply the force which is equal to k equivalent into x naught. What is x naught? H. So F is equal to k h by five. This much force you need to apply. Right? Understood? Very very simple. Okay. So now I have given. Here I have also taken two more questions which are not related with this concept, but again they are very very important questions for J advance. This is build up your understanding twelve. You can try this question in next next uh, video. I will take up this also, and this is again a very simple question. Build up your understanding question number five. So you solve this question. These two questions will definitely improve your confidence. Right? Okay. Fine. So that's it for this video. We'll meet in next video. If you have uh, liked this video, then you can subscribe this side to this channel, and please share to your friends also. Right. So when I see that number of views are increasing, number of subscribers are increasing, I will put up more time in this. Right. And then many many exciting concepts are coming up. I'm not able to give very uh, enough time to this right now, but I have many many things in my. Mind right, which you will not find anywhere. Again, the objective is to make things simple, right? Not difficult. I see. I see that on internet that everyone is trying to make it difficult. We don't have to make things difficult. We have to understand in a simple way, right? So, with this note, I will end this video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I will request you to subscribe this, subscribe this one, and then share with your friends. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you.